Welcome to Module 7. In this module, we're going to look at the hazards that can be caused by fire, electricity and gas, and the controls that can be put in place. Fires need three things to start. A source of ignition, heat, a source of fuel, something that burns, and oxygen. If one of these elements is absent, then a fire can't start or continue to burn. Sources of ignition can include lighters, heating, electrical equipment, cigarettes, matches and anything else that can get extremely hot or cause sparks. Sources of fuel include combustible materials such as wood, paper, plastic, rubber or foam, loose packaging, waste rubbish and furniture. Other sources are flammable liquids, chemicals, petrol, cellulose paint thinners and welding gases, along with engine oil, grease and dust from wood. Some of these materials can also cause explosions. While managers must carry out suitable and sufficient fire risk assessments, FRAs, you can also play a role in helping reduce fire risks. For example, keep heat sources and fuel apart. Never leave a heat source unattended. When you put out a heat source, check it is out. Make sure portable electrical appliances are in good working order and can't be knocked over. Avoid build-up of rubbish and don't obstruct exit routes. Make sure you receive appropriate training on fire procedures and always join in and cooperate during fire evacuation drills. If a fire breaks out, first sound the alarm. Do not use fire extinguishers unless the fire is small, you have been trained and it is safe to do so. Otherwise, leave the location and go to a fire assembly point. Fire extinguishers are mainly coloured red, making them easy to spot in an emergency. The contents and uses of a fire extinguisher are indicated by the colour band on its body, near the handle. A water extinguisher is marked with a red band and is used for wood, paper, textile and solid material fires. Do not use on flammable liquids, electrical or metal fires. Dry powder extinguishers are marked with a blue band and can be used on most flammable liquid and electrical fires. Do not use on fires involving cooking oil. Foam extinguishers are marked with a cream band and are primarily used for flammable liquid fires. Do not use on electrical or metal fires. The carbon dioxide extinguisher is marked with a black band and can be used for flammable liquid and electrical fires. Do not use on metal fires. Wet chemical extinguishers are marked with a yellow band and should be used on contained oil fires. They should not be used on other types of fires, especially electrical and metal fires. We have created a reference chart that can be downloaded from the link below this video. Fire safety signs are used to indicate where to find fire safety equipment. They feature white lettering and images on a red background and usually include a flame graphic. You should familiarise yourself with the fire safety signs on any site you work on. Whilst discussing fire safety, we should also consider how combustible materials can be stored safely. Fuel should ideally be stored in outside buildings under lock and key, away from heat sources and the general working environment. Liquefied petroleum gas LPG bottles should be located where they will not put workers at risk, away from buildings with full and empty bottles segregated. All combustible materials should be secured to protect them from vandalism and theft. Please click next to continue. Electricity can kill or severely injure people and cause damage to property. However, you can take simple precautions when working with or near electricity and electrical equipment 
to significantly reduce the risk of injury. First, let's define some terms that are commonly used when discussing electrical safety. The main hazards of working with electricity are electric shock and burns from contact with live parts, injury from exposure to arcing, fire from faulty electrical equipment or installations, explosion caused by unsuitable electrical apparatus or static electricity igniting flammable vapours or dust. Electric shocks can also lead to other types of injury, for example, by causing a fall from ladders or scaffolds. So what do you need to do to stay safe? You must ensure a risk assessment has been made of any electrical hazards. This should cover who could be harmed by the hazards, how has the level of risk been established, what precautions have been taken to control those risks. Cables, plugs, sockets and fittings must be robust enough and adequately protected for the on-site environment. Make sure machinery has an accessible switch or isolator to cut off the power quickly in an emergency. If you suspect an installation is unsafe, you should first warn everyone to stay away from it and if safe to do so, switch it off. You should then contact a competent person, such as an approved electrical contractor. For electricity to pass through your body, you have to touch a live surface or get close enough for an arc to occur. Risk controls include make sure there are no live surfaces. If there are live surfaces, do not touch. Contact your manager. Surfaces become live because of incorrect wiring, damage to cabling, the equipment itself, or the misuse of equipment. Any damage should be reported immediately. Risk controls include fuses and residual current devices, RCDs, between the electrical supply and the equipment, especially when undertaking construction work, working outdoors, or in wet or space-restricted environments. Always use electrical equipment as specified, and never use a nail in place of a fuse. Check around the job and remember, especially when drilling, that electrical cables may be within walls, floors and ceilings. Use a cable detector. Please click Next to continue. If gas appliances, such as ovens, cookers and boilers, are not correctly installed and maintained, there is a danger of fire, explosion, gas leaks and carbon monoxide, CO poisoning. This work can only be carried out by a qualified person who is gas safe registered, regardless of the type of property involved. It's illegal for an unregistered person to carry out any work on any gas appliance. If you suspect a leak, turn off the supply and immediately call the National Gas Emergency Service. For liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, call your LPG supplier. Never turn a gas supply back on until a leak has been dealt with by a competent person. And finally, if a decision is made to evacuate the building or site, the police should be informed. Please click Next to continue.